All righty, heist. Another day on the railroad. We yes, are, sir. Uh, we're back. I, I get a lot of comments on a lot of videos, and uh, everyone basically keeps telling me to play in first person without using any of the UIs. So not actually <laughs> challenge using accepted. The uh, yes, yeah, so we gotta actually like pull the levers and stuff, which is gonna be an experience, and uh, never leave first person. So we're gonna do some log or no lumber, lumber and beam deliveries to all the various locations we gotta yeah, go to. Yeah, we so. we sort of looked around and realized that we are out of lumber at the ironworks, we're out of beams at the oil field, and then the iron ore mine's out of both. So right. we're gonna go load everything up, two engines, load all the cars, split the train at the sawmill. Khan's gonna right. go to the iron ore mine, and then I'm gonna go to the oil field and the ironworks. So, right. I was just thinking about it too. I originally was gonna bring Tweetsie, but um, I just realized if if I'm going to the iron mine, and according to your tonnage math, I'm just gonna swap out for the climax. I can really bring any engine I want. That's true. Uh, so if, if you're gonna bring the Zoomy boy, I might bring the Glenbrook and Ooh. just have a spicy time because if I go too fast, I'm dead. There you go. Oh. He's yeah. just upping the ante. Although I don't know if the Glenbrook or the uh, the Tweetsie's faster, honestly. But yeah, uh, but either, either way, way, I'm I'm dead if I I know the Glenbrook has the the pure binning potential of cars. <laughs> so that's yeah, I'm gonna live spicy today. And, and you know what? I spent some time looking at. We looked at the Tweetsie's cabin. You know, last episode we were looking at all the the valves and stuff and the valve block and all that. And you know, I feel like I should just spend some time looking at the Glenbrook. Well, there you go. It's been a minute Which, since we've run it, so. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it has one of those oil sprayer majumner guys with the copper line coming out of it, which is cool. Um, but I don't see the valve block, but I do see a bunch of valves around the top here, which I'm assuming are all the shutoff valves. Right. So, so the fun thing about early steam, like the Glenbrook, is that they didn't have turrets, which is right. that, that big block that everything is. That, that was a later thing. And so they just plumbed all this stuff straight into the boiler, and these are all the shutoffs. So... Uh, very different design, but yes, it's got a, a hydrostatic lubricator and, and all that other fun stuff. All right, I'm putting it full forward. I'm gonna. Oh, look at that! We're moving. I know how to do this. It's fine. There you go. Turntables lined 8%. up. We'll get you. I don't. Oh my here. god! I gotta lean out here to see when I'm on the table. Yep. That's okay. I'm I'm on the ground for you. I'm on your brakeman. You got another car to go. I got I got my my brake. Oh god! I can't I can't lean. Got a half car. My... That's uh, that'll do. That'll do. Hey, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Full break. Oh and, my god, this is this is we're gonna It spin doesn't you even there's now. the blind spots on a locomotive man are huge. Like are, <laughs> You don't need to see anything. What do you mean? You have like there, it's not even like I need to go forward by the way, you gotta spin me all the way. Yeah. Yep. yep. <clears throat> would have been. But yeah, the blind spots, the way, man, but... on a locomotive, they're just like massive. Like you can barely see out the although it would help if I could crouch to the right height. That would Right. Like, right. I guess hold on, can I open these? Oh, there we go. There, look at I can see you a little bit better. What's up? Yeah, pop open that cab door. It's hot in there, man. You're gonna want that AC. True, true. Why is there like a bell in the middle of the roof here? What's this? It looks like a fire bell. I'm gonna have to come take a look at it. It looks it's like a dome. As soon as I get you spotted here, I'll come take a peek and see what you're looking at. Yeah, no, it's fine. You, you having fun over there? Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm amped to go. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be an adventure, man. I don't think I've ever legitimately driven a full episode in first person. I don't know if I've done a full episode. I've definitely done pieces of it, and I really do like the view. Like, that's that's a great view. I just wish the controls were a little bit more responsive. All right, you're lined out. What's yeah, the... Yeah, I'm not... Oh, on the... Yeah, there is, like, a bell on the ceiling. I wonder yeah, if that? that's... Um... I don't know what cools out ring the bell you know like that's it might be like oh, signal error type stuff but no that doesn't hold make on. sense How do I... Sierra. I don't oh, know what it on. is oh hand valve right that's my brake compressor valve yeah okay yeah, you gotta make sure your that. compressor is set up yeah yeah leave that on okay am I on t am I going to the god I can't even tell <laughs> you gotta look you gotta at your targets bro here. look at your right, points let's put in notch eight here we go notch oh, eight. Oh boy I'm doing an illegal and I'm riding the pilot, but yeah, you're lined out. So um, I will get on Betsy and I will put the, uh, the first chunk of cars on you. Perfect. So. Um, yeah, I'm lined right out to the lead. Kay. I'm going to just keep, uh, I'll put some brake on here actually. And well, actually I don't need that much brake. I'm going to, I got a Lincoln a pin on, on this car here, so you don't need to. Okay. So I don't need here. anything. Yep. Perfect. Uh, I'm just going to go check the switches up ahead while you couple that in and make sure. sure that they're set for us to leave. 
I had Betsy We're gonna go as on one. That was fun. We're gonna go as one big train with the Glenbrook in the middle for the first stint, right? Until we load it up, and then once it's and loaded, we'll, break we'll it split. Apart. It's gonna be the zoomy and boy in the middle. You'll, you'll be at the oh. head end, because you came oh, out Oh, right, first, yeah, 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 no, sorry, I was, uh, for, I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, there, man, yeah. I, I instinctually, I jumped in Betsy and instinctually pressed the UI. So yeah, I've already, I've already failed, like just instinctually. Okay, yep. well, uh, my apologies. You gotta be really deliberate if you wanna not accidentally jump into a UI. Like I'm really, right, you know, right. Like, it's just programmed into me at this point. Yeah, man. So the, the crouch, you any of the crazy good camera views. The, the crouch okay. in uh, in Betsy puts you like lying down on the floor. It's a little, That's little hilarious. Oh god, and there's no zoom in. I always so thought I that just, was weird uh, about this yeah. game. It would be nice if the the character's camera was more lined up with the windows on some of the locomotives. Yeah, because my first person view is either do. below the window or above the window on Betsy. Yeah. <laughs> and like with with me too on the Glenbrook there, it's like I'm either looking down or I mean I guess you can use the lean buttons, the R and T to lean right. out. That's kind of nice. And then you just I kinda... re I rebound those to Q and E so fast. <laughs> But when you so when you drive a locomotive in real life, you have a little chair built into the wall, like a little bench, and you can still pull all the bars, like the Johnson bar, the throttle, all from that chair, and then look out the window all at the same time. Are, like are you are you ready, viewers? Are you ready? Are you ready? Drinks ready? It depends. Of course, it depends. <laughs> Um, it, it, it really does but on depend your, on, on the... your locomotives at the museum. You guys can, you guys have them that so way. So it, uh, again, it depends on the locomotive, which direction you're running and all that. Like 346 and 20, the little engines that are deckless where the boiler comes all the way to the back. You really can't sit in reverse and run the engine. You kind of have to stand up because it just doesn't really work out. The geometry is not right for it. Um, 491, you can sit and you can grab things either way. The seat's a little bit further back, but uh, also uh, in 20 particularly, it's really hard to move the Johnson bar when it's uh, you know anywhere near center because it comes right up and bumps into your leg when you're sitting. So it's like really inconvenient. Uh, so sometimes you can, some controls you can, some directions you can, um, but it can be hard. All right, I assume that we're all uh, all connected in up there. Yeah, I'm just counting to eight. So I got eight cars here. I unpinned you. You can pull that okay. back. I'll pull it back and then I'll go grab the Zuma. Yeah, and then well, I can come help you grab the Zoomy boy. No problem. Straight to eight. Dunk. You know what? It is kind of nice using Betsy as a shunting engine because she's so like gutless that you don't accidentally put it in notch eight and have it take off on you. Right. That's kind of, you know, kind of a good thing. Oh, Glenbrook. Wonderful engine. Can't believe it's got a faster speed limit than the cars. It's going to be exciting. You're going to you're going to you're going to have a time there, friend. Yeah, no kidding. All right. And now we're lining the table. I'm going to get in the little zoomy boy. What's the theoretical speed limit of one of your cars? Like at what point will a car shake itself off the track or is it like all about track condition at that point? Uh, I mean it it is about track condition. I don't know about like cars specifically. Like I've, I've never heard of like a car specific speed limit because in the narrow gauge, it's always worlds, the engine. It's always like limited the by the engine, and and we like we run slow for the most part. Uh, right. You know, like the fastest that the Rio Grande probably ever did was like forty or fifty miles an hour, and that was only in a few places. Most of the average speed limits are like twenty to twenty five, and in some of the really mountainous crazy stuff, you know, it's like okay, hmm. More like uh, you know, eight, ten, maybe fifteen. Um, yeah, so I've actually... it's never you're never even thinking about speed limits. Right, not really. I mean, there's definitely stories of them going fast and doing all sorts of silly stuff, but uh, I think that was more the exception than the than the actual case. I just overshot the turntable. Don't worry about it. I've got the same problem as far as crouching in here. It's either like the crouch was definitely designed for you to look at the firebox. Yeah, but can't you like. just can't you just poke your head out the roof? I mean, it's like well, I mean, zoom, you, right? yeah, pretty just, much. You the, just uh, stand here. Look, now I can see out the whole roof. It's like that's true. I did the uh, I have drawings for the Montezuma because I've actually been working on designing it in CAD as a fun side project because you know I have the uh, the fantasy to actually build the, the real one maybe someday. Um, and those are live streams if people want to check those out. I've uh, only done one so far, but 
going to be doing some more probably this week. Um, but the uh, the interior top of the cab is six foot three from the floor of the cab. So from the interior middle. From the interior middle, like when you're standing in the middle there, so it's six foot three. And then so the sides fit, aren't but, even. Uh, they aren't even full sides. It's literally just like you yeah. have like a little step there. They're raised up, but I mean you're gonna, you're going to be sitting there, so it's like it's not yeah. a big deal. That's so crazy, like how tiny this thing is. Yeah, I mean six three. I'm only I'm just like I'm like five eleven, so I would be no problem. Yeah, um, still you know, tall on the narrow gauge. My platform shoes. <laughs> Those six inch platforms I have, you know, when you I go show up, uh, show up looking like Gene Simmons, and you've got yeah. uh, platform heels and studs and chains, and you're gonna start spitting blood everywhere. I see how it is. It's a cool little engine, though. It is a really cool little engine. It's uh, it's a cute little thing. If you make a Zuma, though, you gotta paint some flames on the side of it. Like that's <laughs> the, the, the thing. There it is. It's a hot you rod. You gotta paint it, paint hot it black, right? Because are, are we... like that's like the standard, you know, engine of the age. Like just the industrial black, but then just this flames on the side of the boiler. You know. Are we are we officially getting into our uh, Fast and Furious, uh, too fast, too furious talk already? No, no, I was just thinking, like, you know, it would be cool to be the the only guy with, you know, a locomotive that has flames on the side of it, right? Like, no one else would have that. <laughs> Hot rod steam like, engine. You just come out at the museum, right? And everyone's like, oh, what's that engine? Oh, my God, it's got flames on the side of it. And they're just like, yeah, man, sponsored by Hot Wheels. Let's go. Beautiful. Come on now. That's, uh, it sells itself, man. Yeah, easy mode. It is a cute little engine. All right, if you wanna, if you wanna make Zoomy in real life, though, like you're gonna need, um, it's gonna be a lot of like raw iron, wouldn't it? Like a lot of like wrought iron, you know, and like hard worked iron. Uh, originally, yeah. Or would you um, make it more we'd, modern? We'd you'd be making it. With, like, it we'd be making it out of steel just for the sake of everything. Like I thinner mean, walled steel to make the thing lighter and stuff, or would you try uh, and keep it? No. No, it, I mean, it's run weighs... into issues with like the weight of it would be lighter if it was steel, right? Well, I don't steel versus iron. I don't know if there's a huge difference in weight. I mean, you'd, you'd get the dimensions right, make it out of steel. Um, and, and the funny thing is, it's it's actually underrated on tractive effort originally uh, <laughs> because it has a higher factor of adhesion than four. Factor of adhesion is something like almost five. So you can actually increase the tractive effort a little bit by running it with a more modern spec boiler, which I would definitely want to do because oh, you don't want to oh, be able to pull I, some I'm things. an idiot. I was I was monologuing. I did the same thing as you. I didn't even realize Dude, it, it is it is so it like I was, wired into your brain in this game. Yeah, I was just sitting in the UI of Betsy like I just I already broke the rule. My bad. Oh, there you go. I kicked those so you can just Oh, okay. I'm just gonna back Betsy up. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Did you did you kick these? Because they're just like they're real slow. I did kick them, but I mean we can back up. That's true. They do they're, have the power. They're rolling at a, a scenic like. These are actually right rolling now. at a, a very slow pace. But they might. They might make it. It's fine. I didn't oh. want to bend it too. Oh, oh, is that is this actually happening right now? What? Or is, or is the client side of the video game just? No, I think it's fine. Everything's on the track. I think. Uh, I okay. Need to yeah, because everything just derailed on my end for a brief second. <laughs> no, you're good. Everything's here. Okay, so we're gonna back up a little bit. Yeah, I'll back up. I'll back up. You're not gonna. I don't think you could try. See if Zuma pulls through Glenbrook's break, but uh, you know what? I'll just take my break off and let you do the work. Oh, well, my yeah, break I'm, was I'm off. Closer. You know what? I wasn't even. I was even, never <laughs> properly mind. secured equipment. There you yeah, go. Yeah, no, no big deal. It's fine. And here let comes me just tie in my air here to all the other cars. Oh dunk. wait a minute. We don't. We don't have air. Is there air? No. No, there's not. I don't even have a hookup for air on the back. Oh no, I do. I do. It's just a sad nozzle i've got an automatic brake valve looking thing without an air compressor so you know uh it's fine yeah that makes sense yeah you okay. just blow in it real hard and then it <laughs> releases the brakes yeah yeah exactly exactly okay uh well right. so highball to the sawmill then yeah i i don't know how i guess i'm gonna go full 100 percent. yeah I was, well okay um, you're not we're not okay no whistle signals i see how it is I, I just did. Did you not hear it? Oh, no, I didn't hear it. I see your steam particle effects, so you're rendering, I think. Do you hear it? Do you hear that? Nope. No, nope, wow, I guess we're not doing my whistle signals. Bro, it's, it's only eight car. I could, like, what? It's fine. You're, you're really far away. It's a really I did, quiet I whistle. I did do whistles. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, wait, that's the Johnson bar. Shoot, I need to pull the throttle in. 
Yeah, we're going we're going spicy fast. And I feel like you're just pushing. I have 20% throttle on, bud. Okay, with with, with the bar I'm just, at 9%. I'm barely pulling for days. Uh, okay, track. so this switch is this switch looks good. Okay, perfect. And then you know, we're just going to I'm just going to keep an eye on all the rest of the switches because I have no idea what position they're going to be in. That's fine. Yeah, normal things. I do love the view with your head out the window in this game, staring down at the rods doing the dance. I can't... Oh, I can barely see them. I guess you have a much better view, much less obstructed. Yeah, I've, I've got the world's idiotiest, bittiest choo-choo right here, so... That was the whole kind of inspiration for why we, we keep joking about doing it. It's like, okay, well, I originally thought, okay, well, it'd be fun to do a series on building a live steam engine on the channel. Yeah, and then it's like, small. but it's like a live steam engine, seven and a half or 15 inch gauge. Like the complexity of the Montezuma is still the same. And it's just a little bit wider. Like the boiler is still itty bitty. It's actually small enough that they make seamless pipe. That's bigger than the boiler. Wait, 17 inch gauge, like, that's just bottle stuff though, right? Or is it actually It's it's what people call it live steam. It's still a model, like fifteen inch gauge. Um, but right, those are those trains that people like sit on the tender and ride, like those yes. little small ones. Yeah. yeah, okay. Exactly. So but I saw a guy using one of those and he had like this tiny little coal shovel that was like he could like I could hold it in two thumbs almost. And he's just right. like got this little door and he's opening the coal door and he <laughs> shovels it in and they're pretty yep. cool. I mean, they've got power. They what? are really neat machines, and they, they take a lot of work and, and time and money to put together. But we sat there thinking about Montezuma, and it's like, it's not that much, like, it's not more complex, and it's really not that much bigger than one of those, because it's such a little engine. So, I feel like they would, potentially those feasible. would need constant lubrication, though, like the little model ones. You'd just be, I feel like you'd be going through lube like crazy just to oh, keep they're, them. Oh, they're as annoying as the real ones. Like, they're still steam-powered yeah. and still machined and all those different pieces, and... Oh, I thought I was leaning, and I was uh, pressing A, and I fell off the side of the engine. It's fine. Dude, I felt... It feels a lot shakier and sketchier being in the... Hey, in the you locomotive. feel all the bumps, for sure. Yeah, I, like, in the camera view, it's kind of smoothed out. This feels a little bit sketchier. I'm going to bring it up to 45, notch uh, 4. There no, you go. Notch 4 and a half. <laughs> 4. It's fine. I don't know. Well, if there's 8 notches, each notch is, like, what, 12%? Something yeah, like something that. something like that. If you were to twelve point five percent, yeah, I can do math. So okay, so I'm notch three. I'm glad I'm, to see that we're following the proper schedule. Um, right. You know, I'm just I'm uh I started ringing my bell in first person and I can't get it to stop. So I don't I don't know how you stop the bell from ringing. I think it just eventually stops, doesn't it? I have no idea. Well, I'll just yeah, I just to wrong it mine too. It might just yep. keep going. It looks like the cable is kind of having a, a mini freak out. That's you know we're dancing around the track. It's a whole thing. All right, we're coming up to a switch around here. I can't I can't exactly see what position it's in. Okay, well I'm gonna shut off just in case. I also shut off. I f I feel like we're going to the sawmill. I feel like that's where it would be last. Yeah, but probably. They even see it. There's trees in the way. Where, where did we run last time? No, we ran to the smelter last time, so we're probably not lined. Probably coming back from the smelter. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna run up the gauge. Real safe practice. It's fine. I find if you balance on the rail while running up the gauge, it's a lot smoother. You can break so... more rules at the same time. There you go. <laughs> Are you ever allowed to step on rail, or is it like nope. always step? across rail always step over rail i mean sometimes you end up having to for whatever reason but it's against the rules to even step on the rail and rail's super slippery especially when it's wet so right it's verboten as is being in the gauge unless it's absolutely necessary for your duty but uh that's all right this one's rare. set i'm gonna go check the switch hub okay and see where we're at there do you ever engineer, uh, like, I know you said you worked as a shop foreman and stuff at BNSF, which, by the way, BNSF again in the news, another train derailed, oh my god. <laughs> I, um, I actually haven't even heard of this one. <laughs> yeah, there's another one, it's derailed, apparently it had a bunch of ethanol in it, they burned the ethanol off. Oh um, no, I did hear about this one, okay, but yeah, not today, but just, not not yet another one. I just saw the big BNSF logos, and I was like, cool, that's, that's just great. 
Um, but when when you were working there, uh, did you ever like drive modern diesels? Allegedly, uh, like you can't you can't prove time? anything. Oh, allegedly. Allegedly, okay. you can't prove anything. Gotcha. So there was a there was a day, um, allegedly perhaps, uh, because I was not allowed to. Uh, it was not you know obviously like I was not certified, didn't have all the safety whatever. Not my right. craft. I was uh, management, so I wasn't supposed to do anything anyways. Um, but uh, I allegedly perhaps may have helped the guys out and moved uh, moved an engine one evening because. Uh, it was kind of funny. We had third shift allegedly was uh, happening. Well, third shift happened, but everything else. Is All you alleged. know is okay. that the engine was in one spot and got to and the then other. It was, and, and then it was somewhere else. No, so it was somewhere else. Yeah. Third shift. Uh, third shift. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, it was a Friday night. My machinist and electrician both called out. So I was just going to have the two laborers who the guys who move engines. And at the time we had open overtime. So anyone could just work up to 16 hours a day every day if they really wanted to and uh the number one labor came in eight hours early to first shift so he came in for a 16 hour shift starting at 10 p.m because he was a madman but wanted uh wanted his cash so you know do the thing um and so he came in so i had the three laborers and that was it uh, and they, they would clean stuff. They would service locomotive toilets and, and crew packs and whatever. And, and they were responsible to move the locomotives around. They were kind of like the inside hostler is what we called them. Um, I'm letting you pull and spot, by the way. Yeah, this is going to be this is gonna be really terrible to spot. I was just thinking. Uh, it's, it's fine. But, I mean, we can just use the one engine oh, can... to load the whole train. I'm going to start with it's beams true. right here. Okay. You've got uh, another half car to go. Oh, I'll, I'll, well... I'll, give you, I'll give you signals and then I'll continue my story. <laughs> Hold on here. Quarter car. Five foot. Yeah, anywhere in there is fine. All right. Okay. So Good anyway, stuff. um, I we had like fifty locomotives at the shop that day, which is ri a ridiculous shop count for us. Our shop wasn't really that super huge, but it wasn't. Do small they have either. enough tracks? Like like. You obviously have your roundhouse tracks, but then you have tracks that lead into the roundhouse where you can store just random stuff. That's yeah, ready to keep we, service. we like fifty locomotives is uh, about getting plugged up. Like that's almost running out of space for things because uh, we had twelve shop, twelve shop stalls, uh, maintenance building, and then you could fit something like eight or ten locomotives up on the tracks upstairs. We called it by the shop. You can take it ahead too, please, Con. Um, and so like 50 is plugged and of course like the whole point of third shift was setting up for day shift really at our shop uh, just because of how small the third shift was and so i had them moving almost every single locomotive uh, you got another half car to go keep going 10 foot five foot and that'll do uh, and so one of the things that i needed them to do was put this locomotive into the roundhouse so that it could be washed on day shift because it came back uh, with a, like an oily, a oily mess on the fuel tank, and and it had given us issue before, and somebody had complained externally, so it was like, okay, we really need this thing to get cleaned up. Um, and the guy who came in early on overtime goes, hey, why are we putting this one in the house to wash? Why aren't we running it through the wash rack? It's like, well, we got 50 locomotives at the shop, and they're moving almost every single one. I can't have them running a locomotive back and forth for an hour getting it clean in the wash rack because it's not as simple as just a one pass. You know, it might take them 30, 45 minutes to do the whole task totally. All right, let's uh, take it ahead to lumber. And so, uh, he, you know, he was getting frustrated because he knew that he was there for 16 hours. So he wasn't going to be able to move power the whole time because hours of service and stuff. So he was going to be stuck hand washing the locomotive in front of the supervisor's office on day shift when day shift rolled around. So he's like, why? That, that would suck. That right. Would suck a that, lot. That's, that sucks. Like, like you don't want to like, do that. It's like washing your boss's car while your boss right. watches you. you what, know? One like, more car to same, go. Same, same vibe. Half car. 10 foot. That'll do. That'll do. That'll negative do. Uh, minus 10 feet minus 20 feet <laughs> he got some more weight on it now all right uh 10 foot that'll do just stop it there and it'll it'll probably work dude i have to move my my camera to like oh. six different levers oh. to get that uh take it ahead 10 foot would you con <laughs> oh my god this is like the brake lever while you got the i just need to go slower okay move a that'll bit. do okay and slack okay perfect that'll work 
Yeah. Anyway, so I, you know, I joked like, you know, I wish if we had another set of movers, you know, we we could do it, but we, I just don't want to try and ruin these guys' night, you know, make them do all this stuff because they would be like darn near working through break, basically trying to get all this stuff moved in an eight-hour shift. And then I joked, you know, well, uh, I was an engineer at my last job. I'd I'd run it with you, but you know, I I can't do that. And and all three of them just go, oh, we don't mind. That would actually be helpful. Uh, you know, but we don't want to take you away from your supervisor stuff. I was like, well, it's, it's my, it's my they Friday. And him. And it's, now that's why Heiss is homeless, because he got sued at the... Basically, no, it's alleged. It didn't happen. No one could prove yeah, anything. no, it never happened. Um, so, uh, you know, I was like, it's my Friday. I'm actually caught up on all my duties and everything. Uh, you know, so as long as nobody sees or says anything you know it's uh it's Let's fine draft some choo -choos. and uh so i allegedly uh switched out with uh a number one the oldest uh laborer yep. highest seniority and laborer then, who was uh to, yeah there was 37 cars and, and we put uh, it in they, notch eight and uh yeah notch eight and then and then heist was like oh man the switch and so he i got out off and, yeah it was the whole thing and then yeah. tripped and then couldn't get back on the very slow moving train um <laughs> It was 37 cars. Right. I had to leave it not and then, and then Take it my head too, Con. Yeah, so allegedly, I have allegedly operated a GP39-2. Allegedly. Which Are is, they, uh, uh, yeah. they're all self-lubricating bearings and stuff on cars as well, or is it just... Oh, uh, all cars, they're, they're all roller bearings now, so they're all packed, sealed. One car. Oh, packed, sealed, and that's yeah. it. Half car. Ten foot. That'll do. Beautiful. Let's see if the Zoomy Boy is spotted. Oh, the Zoomy Boy is spotted. That's beautiful. I don't know what you need. I think more beams because that's more oil. Um, um. Yeah, we could. I mean, we're. It doesn't really matter. We still. Need I guess to connect beams. The... Beams makes. We're out of both, but yeah, probably more beams. No, I'm than, just saying because uh, you have yeah. four and three, so it makes sense to do four beams. Four and beams and then three of the lumber. Yeah. I'm gonna take the break off the Glenbrook and then you can use Zoomy to spot. Sure. Okay. Should be able to push all this. <laughs> one can hope. Well, it should. It's flat ground, right? Like you it know, is, flat but ground uh, is. it's, uh, it's uh, gonna be a whole thing still. Port oh, the brake's already off. I'm so good. I left my equipment with no brake. <laughs> look, just... look at you once again. Uh, speaking of things oh, at BNSF, God. that was like the one thing that I ever heard the FRA actually finding us for at the shop was improper what, not securement. On locos? Yeah. Improper securement of locomotives because it's not just putting the brake on it's putting the independent brake on putting the automatic brake on with a 20 pound set le uh, Isolating the locomotive turning off the generator field and leaving the reverser centered if I'm remembering all of my stuff, right? So it's, a, so it's a whole thing Basically you guys would turn on the independent and then walk away and come back So Somebody did that and uh, and then the FRA inspected and got mad and, and they find the shop That was the only thing that well, I you know heist. That's why these incidents that you know have 30 cars don't happen. That's that's why Because people have to do the 14 steps to turn off the locomotive before <laughs> exactly Yeah that's crazy. Am I gonna have to spot this manually, or, or, or are you? Oh yeah, I guess counts? I can spot you. That would be good. You know, like uh, you're gonna, you're gonna one do car, half car, plug it, quarter okay. car, break. Yeah, you can probably break. Okay. That's good. Is that is that gonna work? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I went for the break and it kept grabbing the Johnson bar, so that was a uh, that was an experience. This feels like we would pull Zoomy apart, like right. It is a very little, little cute thing. I don't know if it yeah. get pulled apart, but uh, yeah. I feel like the front bar, the front bar would just rip right off. That's what, <laughs> you know? If you were it doing this, if you were actually putting bar. an engine in the middle with a pilot, would they actually do this with a bar or would you just remove the pilot? Well, you, they'd do it with the bar. They'd shove through the bar. Although this is like spaghetti thin, itty right. bitty weird little bar. You know, it'd be much it, bigger It'd be than a that. bigger bar than yeah. that. Although Zoomy might have might have had something that small. All right, small, you can pull so. ahead to lumber. To the lumber. But they would never. So like you, are pilots actually like really hard to remove, or is it a bunch of bolts, or is it something? It's not. It's not too hard to remove. There's like maybe four or five, four or six bolts that actually and bolt just... it to the pilot beam, and then you right. just undo those and pull it off, and then they come off. But I mean that they hardly ever like get taken off. So. You guys don't obviously double head at the museum at all. Oh, we have, we have several times. It's just just for fun. We don't need to, but we enjoy yeah. doing it. What's the longest train you've run at the museum? Uh, ten cars. 
end cars plus the locomotive. Are yeah, you flat well, spotting tires up there? Yes, of course. Uh, you weren't giving me car you counts, go. So. You need to go ahead one truck. One truck. All right, small amount. Yeah, like we uh, just, 10 just... cars, 491, and it's tender, and then right, Thomas the tank engine on the front, which you... is uh, the equivalent of half a car. So 10 you and have a half Thomas cars. The You have a Thomas We get one that engine. visits us from the island of Sodor, don't you know? There's a, a the rep, there's several le replicas of uh, someone Thomas made like made. an 060 Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes, there are full many boiler, full steam power. No, there is oh. one that is like full steam power. They actually converted a real steam locomotive to look like Thomas and everything, and it's cold fired and it lives at the Strasbourg Railroad. But they made like three or four replicas that are basic, basically blue dumpsters on wheels. Uh, <laughs> they're electric, or are they just non-powered? They, they're non-powered. That's why we had 491. 491 was pulling the train and shoving Thomas around, and and Thomas was there looking pretty on Thomas the front. Thomas have brakes so. or anything, or just he just... has a handbrake and he has a brake cylinder and and brake shoes. So uh, and dump valves. So you crew Thomas. You put an engineer and fireman, quote unquote, in Thomas, and you operate the animatronic face and and control his voice lines and make him puff smoke. Uh, and then oh you uh, you also man the whistle because you're the lead engine. So you have I just an air whistle. like someone someone had a really bad day, you know, and then it just puts the worst Thomas voice lines while he's driving around. There's a bunch of kids, and he's like, "I hate my job." There there <laughs> is there is uh, allegedly an ox in on Thomas, and uh, oh, uh, things things have been heard uh, from from Thomas before, but uh, that, that's that's that all really I'm gonna say there. Yeah, that would be that would be hilarious. Just someone had a. He really has bad uh, day. he has a bunch of preset lines. There's you press yeah, the button uh, and 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 like it's got like one of six and for like different flavors of oh you're entering the station you're leaving the station, you're right. whatever. So how's that spot? My name is Thomas. I I'm a demon from hell. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I one truck. You you uh you I mean yeah the animatronic face is a little creepy not gonna lie but uh, uh one one truck ahead one, I'm, yeah, I'm one. working on it okay okay i'm just I'm, I'm looking i'm not seeing the chuffs of smoke so there i wasn't sure if you were two there you go you're good yeah <laughs> so yeah i, yeah, I like... mean we we call him the big blue dumpster because i mean it w w the way it sounds when you're in the cab of thomas is it sounds like you're in well, it a... must just be like a hollow shell it's, it's a I hollow mean, shell it sounds it's like light, a... so it's gonna just bounce around it sounds like you're inside of a giant roll-off dumpster being hit with sledgehammers when you go down the rails it is right that's perfect it is and a it's narrow gauge it's yeah a narrow gauge they, they made it there's like two standard gauge ones i think that are like that there's a three foot gauge one and apparently a two foot gauge one and oh the funny God. thing is, he's still the, the same proportions in narrow gauge. So the they just push the wheels in and the frame in. And so when you're in 491 running behind Thomas, you actually can't see the wheels of Thomas because they're so far inset. It's still standard gauge width. And so it's just like, oh yeah, there's Thomas floating down the tracks ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. It's a, it's a fun Imagine thing, you're the a, guy it's a who wrote like, so. the Thomas the Tank Engine series and now it's become this like absolute cultural icon you know right right the reverend audrey apparently I is that actually who wrote it yeah that's that's wow i i don't know hardly anything about it and i'm sure now that we've talked about it we're gonna get all kinds of comments about it because there are Dude, many folks who are very passionate about it so. fans out there there's there really a lot are. of uh i watched it when i was growing up for I sure I, I don't know much about it. Um, I do know that no, the, the way that they filmed it originally it was actually really cool. Like they had model trains that actually did it and they had like steam pipes or like fake steam pipes in the layout so that when the trains would stop, they could have the big puff of steam because they spotted it right over where this pipe would release and stuff and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Anyway, um, I'm unpinning myself from you. That's fine. You got to go slow. I got to go through the switch and then right. go left and down the hill. And then you got to go. We are, um, we are now cleft in twain. Yeah. So uh, 10 minutes, sir, please. 10 minutes, sir. I'm not following you on the uh, on the same track. We're not on the main right now. We're in industrial trackage. Doesn't matter. Timetable yeah, time rules industrial. need but not apply. But the main apply. goes through this industrial track. Like the You're main... still within yard limits. Yes, there are special rules for the main track, even when in yard limits. So Can the can the main track go faster than yard limits, though, when it's in the yard limits? Or is it like... It depends on your timetable and depends on how you're protecting it. Um, in, in narrow gauge land, usually no. You would go yard speed. So... That sucks. 
It does. But, uh, you know, you could set it up differently and have derails protecting the entrance and exit so that, you know, no one's accidentally going to kick a car out onto the main and cause a huge accident. So and then you could do things like de running de full like speed. And a derail device to a kick derail a car device. off. Yep. Purposely and that's how derail. You the main. Yep. We have those. They're they're way more common than you think. Um, like but at you our can't shop. Can't stop a train doing sixty. You know, it'll just obliterate it. Well, that's yeah, but that's why they're on the yard side. They're not to protect the yard from the man as much as they are protect things rolling in the yard from getting out to the man or hitting buildings. We had derails at the entrance to every uh, every building that you know in, in the mechanical facilities except for the roundhouse itself because the turntable acted as a derail and you couldn't really spot anything yeah, else otherwise but if you want to like move a derail device like can you just unbolt it and move it by yourself or do you need a so whole, like, ours were built or... built into location with a switch stand and everything like they were permanent oh so you can just um, pop a switch and the derail you just, pops you up. throw a switch and, and it has an extra the target says d for derail and it and right. you know it's a derail and it's a it's just a switch stand um, though there are portable ones too, right? But the, uh, the, you know, the ones that like a shop or at a yard, you always need it in that location. So you're always just going to use it. So I just do that. Well, you're out of render distance. So you must've taken off pretty quick. Uh, no, I didn't. I'm not going too fast. I don't think I put it at 29%, 22%. I hear your whistle, but well, we've got zoomy boy wide in the corner here and full throttle. So. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Uh, the problem I have is it's like this. This path seems a lot scarier now that I'm stuck in the cab. You know, like it's right. I'm just going downhill. I'm trying to just keep it at a low throttle point and go nice and slow, but can't really see around the corners and the trees just really cover everything else. So it's really hard to see. Oh, I've got a tiny little porthole here. There we go. This is what I'm gonna look through. Right through that. Perfect. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, man, driving a train, like, you know, I've driven a few trucks and stuff in my time and that kind of thing, and, you know, they got big blind spots, but the blind spot on a steam locomotive, I mean, you can't see anything. If if someone's in the track right in front of you, they're just, that's it. Like, they're going to be... Well, it's not like you can steer, so... Yeah, that's they're, true. Their fault. <laughs> I guess, but... It's a, it's a train. It's not going to come out and go hit you. What are you doing on the tracks? Yeah, fair. It is, it is the responsibility if you, you have an engineer and a fireman for a reason. The fireman is responsible for all left-hand turns. So while you're going around a left-hand turn as a fireman, you need to be watching out ahead of you. you you're, you're leaning not, out the window. You're not firing. You're not doing any of the other stuff. Uh, unless you're an oil burner, of course, then you can be adjusting firing valve and whatever. But um, you're watching the left side of the train because that is your job is protecting. Make sure, you know, if anything does pop up, you can call it out and say, hey, we need to stop or, or whatever, or the switch is lined against us, etc. Right. And then on straight track, it's, you know, either one, but the right hand curves are all for the engineer. So, I mean, you, you understand the blind spot and then work around it with extra crew. So, Cause it's so not you just you. Would you have a conductor on just a straight up freight line or would you just have engineers and firemen? Oh yeah. Five man crews for freight stuff, man. The conductor, the conductor is not about punching tickets. That's a, that is a myth, and that's another video that I need to do, talking about what the conductor's real job is. But the conductor is the boss of the train. He's taking care his, of all the paperwork. His real job, guys, is he has a little book, okay, and he writes down all the infractions you do while no, you're No, he's not a train master. He's a conductor. He's not a train master. <laughs> and then he reports you to management, gets a pay raise, right? You yeah, know. That's, you're still talking about a train master. <laughs> Uh, train master is the first level of management for uh, TYNE train yard. All right, uh, so five folks. man crew. You've got one fireman, one engineer, two brakemen, a conductor. Precisely. Yeah. At least in this and year, the brakemen are just the brakemen are like. For me, for some reason, I picture brakemen like the flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz, <laughs> and they just like they go around jumping around on the cars, you know, with their with their little flying monkey suits, and you know. I mean, more or less in this era, right. yeah. But you know, you're running across the cars and tying stuff down. But and then they go, they get put in the little caboose at the back, and they just kind of sit there and have their little like tea parties. Well, and the, then the rear brakeman would, the the head end brakeman would be up on the engine. Oh, so, so the rear brakeman gets banished to the caboose on his own. He's just like well, everyone he's, has he's in the, in the caboose front. of the, the conductor, and then the the fireman. Well, the conductor's engineer. in the caboose. Too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a very weird situation. 
Yes, but that's why we have a head brakeman and a rear brakeman, and and the conductor used to be always in the caboose, and nowadays he's up in the engine too in, in modern railroading. But that's just because we've changed things here. Well, we don't have cabooses anymore in modern railroading. We, we we do not. Well, not really. They they do use cabooses for some things, but where what do they use a caboose for though? Like, uh, is there a modern constructed caboose like? Like a modern built, I know I've seen, I've seen, okay, so I have seen on the back of a train, like it, it's like a light thing, like a little, like yeah, a big. the flashing rear end device, the Fred. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, which, which fulfills the role of the caboose, basically. That's what is the, the modern equivalent of a caboose. Um, so, but it's just a giant light on a truck. Well, just... it's a, it's a light that says, hey, I'm the end of the train, but it also has an accelerometer that communicates back to the engineer with the head of train device to tell him, hey, your whole train is now moving. You can pull up the throttle further open. And it's got a pressure sensor for the brake pipe. So you can see, hey, my air is all the way restored back to full pressure at the rear or as close as it can be with all the leakage and everything. And it also, right. in most cases these days, also has an emergency dump valve built into it that the engineer can actuate so you can dump the train into emergency from the back of the train instead of the front. So rather than everything piling in on you, here. it'll break from the rear. So um, that's interesting. There's lots of little neat things that it can do. So yeah, it's a. Uh, so they do they always put that on the back of every train, or just big long ones? Or that is on. It the, depends. That is re legally required to be on every train that's like running over the main. I wouldn't. Oh. I would imagine that some like road switchers or some sort of switching outfit, uh, industrial type thing, wouldn't have them. Um, but I don't. I'm not 100% certain when the exact delineation is for yes or no. Um, but anything that's like, oh yeah, we're going across country on the main. Oh, for sure, has one. Yeah. And they're like they're radio controlled from the locomotive up front. Like everything's radio. I'm pretty sure it's radio. I'm not. I'm not 100% certain on that. I never had to deal with the, the setup of it. But it's a. Uh, a Fred, and then the slang term for it around the Northwest was the Mary, because Mary and Fred, there you go, uh, was the head end device. And so the head end device can talk to the rear end device uh, that way. And the, each locomotive that was a lead locomotive had a head end device in it. Amazing. So, very, very different than our, our humble caboose and everything. So. All right. So if you're a conductor sitting in the caboose of a train in the 1800s, what are you doing on the you freight are, train? You are watching out for hot boxes. From the cupola usually making sure hot. that journal I, box. I feel like my definition of hot box and the train definition are two they are two different, different things you are not uh, you're not getting high in the caboose sir <laughs> uh, he's just like guys why is car number three smoking like you know why is there just a giant puff coming out of that box car you know like yeah basically no you're watching the journal boxes to make sure they're not catching fire you're keeping an eye out on the side of the train for anything amiss and you're handling paperwork um as far as anything's like if there's a delay you have a delay report to fill out if there's an unusual thing that occurs uh you know you got to write it down and document it for the railroad and all that and document your times in and out locations all that sort of stuff um so, so like your your locomotive explodes and your train has no brakes and it's just coasting down this track and you're like writing love letters like that would love. that would uh, that yes, would make it into the report speak. yes <laughs> my locomotive crew yeah i cannot activate the brakes i feel i will never stop uh they have dump valves in the cabooses like you can actually send my that's, love to the children that's the whole thing either you have the railroads online style caboose which is like the caboose 49 we have at the colorado railroad museum yeah with the um, big uh brake handle brake handle in the cupola but then more modern cabooses had dump valves and sometimes even like an actual kind of locomotive style brake valve where you could slowly apply the brakes from the uh, from the caboose. So the conductor is always capable unless the uh, the air has been totally all the brake so all the brake lines were uh, cut. All the pads were removed by some criminal organization. Uh, well, then to. then th that fits your Hollywood plot right there, sir. So yeah. yeah, yeah. For some reason, none of the brakes work on anything. Yeah, that uh, that happens. I mean, that happens in railroading. So, um, I'm coming into the oil field to do my first unload. I just want to make sure you're joining my company so that when you do eventually unload. Oh right, yes, uh, I have to join your company. You're, you're that would giving be good. me the money. I have. I'm holding the wallet this week. Remember? So. Yeah, you need a. That's right. Because then we can buy some oil cars finally. Yeah, uh, we can, we can afford one now. right now. 
but uh, yeah, that's a, a yeah, sad Yeah, we need to get at least two. One is like, we could get one one of e one either of them, or we could probably get two coffin ones, but I feel like we need two regular ones, because the coffin ones just have no capacity. Yeah, the coffin ones and are kind of stupid. <laughs> they're larger, <laughs> heavier, honest. with no capacity, so I don't, yeah, it's not. It's uh, not, not even a side grade, it's just a downgrade. So. Yeah. But it is cheaper, but I mean, the price works out the same, but you end up spending the same amount of money for the same capacity, but then you end up with more weight, so it just kind of sucks. Uh, and Montezuma's break, we're flat spotting the wheels at the expense oh, yeah, you of- don't have uh, a, you don't have a break. I don't Montezuma. have air brakes on Montezuma. Yeah. That's uh, That's been an interesting topic in our, in our scheming of potentially building one. Like, what do you do with that? Do you put brakes on it? What do you do? Cause I we, feel like you'd want modern air brakes. Yes, absolutely. We we are a thousand percent in support. Like of you'd have putting to throw a compressor on, on the side of it, even right. though it doesn't have one. And well, like... so it didn't as built, but we there's so few pictures of the darn thing because it didn't last for super long. But there are pictures of it that we found. Because they made a tiny little. They basically made like a 90 horsepower Honda Civic, and then they were wondering why it couldn't pull anything. Well, like, come I mean, on. yeah, it's fine. But the first they bit made of the this railroad... tiny little edge. They were like, you know what? Maybe we they should make it a little bigger. They had four of them. They had four little Zoomy boys. They weren't all named Montezuma. That's actually one of my annoyances with uh, the way that Railroads Online names the locomotives for one of the class. It wasn't the Montezuma class. They were the class 25, and there was four of them. Cortez, right. Ute, and Del Norte uh, were the sisters. And Montezuma. But, and Montezuma. So uh, there were four of them. But anyway. So they made four before they realized they should probably have something with a little bit more a little bit more get well, up Well, so they were supposed to be the little passenger engines to start, and then they had sisters that were, or cousins that were the class 35, also delivered the same year that there might have been f f uh, six of those. I can't remember. Um, class 35s being 260 versions, basically of the same engine. And those could pull a little bit more. They weighed, you know, 35,000 pounds instead of 25,000. Um, and those lasted a little longer. But yeah, Montezuma and all of her sisters except Ute were scrapped and done by like the early 1890s. And then um, uh, Ute survived on a different railroad, the Colorado Eastern, until the early 1900s. But yeah, very small, not really capable of pulling much, particularly up hills. And the, the railroad quickly ended up doing things that were... Uh, pretty hilly. That was the whole point of originally going narrow gauge for the Rio Grande. Um, the, but the first bit of railroad was like Denver down to Pueblo, which is relatively flat compared to the big mountain stuff because you're just on the front range. So, uh, you know, it was, it was a good engine for a long time, but we have found pictures of it where it has an air reservoir on the back of the tender. We can't find but pictures. Have a it, it it has a main reservoir. It has a compressor. We can t like we can say that for sure by that seeing that picture. We just don't have pictures of the way that the compressor is mounted because <laughs> they right. didn't take pictures of that. Because there's like maybe six or seven pictures of the darn thing. But we've seen it with Ute. We've seen it with Montezuma that they have a main res on the back of the tender. So okay, we you know we don't do the necessarily as built condition we do something that would be more similar to what it was a little bit later on and there it goes i just I know it's a bit of a problem but you know it is what it is it's fine i ran uh, i ran on a zoom i had a fire so that's uh, uh we're out of pressure and i'm just slowly oh, coasting around the oil field loop right now yeah i uh i'm bringing the uh the glenbrook here into the climax's engine shed so i can get the climax out okay but it also means that I have to go backwards the whole way back. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, towing. I'm going to put the cars in front and tow them with the bar. But, you know, just you... got to gotta do that. Yeah, yeah. You'll run tender first. It happens. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that because I removed the turntable here. So, you know, problems. Um, let me see here, which I really hope I guessed right. How, okay, how much trouble would you get in? I'm sure it happened back in the day, but, like, steam guys would never put the bar in and then leave the train. What do you mean, put the bar in? Like, put the put the reverser and the throttle in a notch and then just leave the train and go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Oh, God, no. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it happened, like, people like, like accidentally doing something or whatever, but, like, that that's, like, big no-no, like... 
very, very Oh god, uncommon. Climax, where are all your knobs? Okay, that's your brake. Oh god, your brake's way up there. Why is it there? Where's your reverser? Oh my god, bro, this engine is laid out terribly. Uh, I'm realizing that there is Baldwin lining on the inside of Montezuma's tender tank. That's, uh, that's a little strange. I'm checking water because I don't know if I'm out of water or if I'm out of fire. Although it started pulling now. Hang on. Dude, okay, the climax is a really weird laid out interior. That's more modern. You got the throttle bar on top, but then you have the brake like way up forward on the cab. And then the reverser is like next to the brake. I mean, I guess you're supposed to sit right here and just pull the throttle from the side. Oh, that's kind of how you do it. I see. Oh, yeah. I mean, throttle throttle hands your left hand. So, like, you sit down and you right. grab the throttle from, you know, with your left hand. So, it's typically a little bit more centered. But uh, a lot of engines are not terribly ergonomic. <laughs> there, there are many that are surprisingly not ergonomic. I just said, yeah, I, I'm basically supposed to sit on this seat right here and then man all the controls. Got the cylinder cocks on the floor, which that's interesting. How much fire do I have? Lots of fire. Okay. All right. We're backing up. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just swapping out to the climax now. I feel you like go. you're going to be done long before I am. Possibly. Me running out of steam definitely uh, did it's not help in that. It, uh, did not help right. in that endeavor, but yeah, I'm running around the oil field loop right now, and then uh, I'll be heading to the ironworks, and then I guess I could take my cars back and hump them, and, and then I'll probably just be twiddling my thumbs waiting for you, but yeah. Yeah, I, I unfortunately have the longer route here. You do for sure have the longer run. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. 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 Slam the brakes, please. Flat spot those wheels. Oh my <laughs> god, we are... Oh no, that what, is not... What, what, what you doing down there, bud? Uh, I almost went full speed into the uh, engine shed helper station track rather than the main. Nice. Yeah, forgot nice. to put the switch back. Yep, got to do that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you know, normal normal things, normal day on the railroad. Don't, be, don't worry yes, about you it. Do, it's fine. Just yeah. uh, don't tell anybody about it. You'll be okay. It takes you so much longer to flip directions when you have to pull each of the things one at a time manually rather than... Right. Right. Yeah. It's a whole challenge there. But I guess if you were on the railroad, you could just leave your throttle in one position and then flip. The... <laughs> flip, flip the Johnson bar? Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it like, it's really hard to do that? It's when you have not... a lot of steam chest pressure behind it, you I mean, you're not flipping that thing around. Hey, Johnson bar is usually not terribly easy to move. Depends on the size of engine. Some of them are easier than others, but it's usually a pretty two-handed endeavor. Um, right. And if you have a bunch of steam chest pressure on, on an engine that's slide valve and Stevenson valve gear, yeah, it's, uh, that is a whole, whole thing. Uh, they, they usually are known for taking you for a ride, trying to take you through the front cab door. Uh, so if you really try and move that thing far, the engine's going to put it where it wants it, which is probably not where you want it. So usually best to uh, not have some steam on when you're trying to do a big move like that. But my climax can. doesn't produce smoke anymore. Oh, that's there, interesting. Oh, oh it's, it it did for like a split second and then it stopped. That's and now it weird. stopped again. I, I have yeah, I have no smoke coming out. That means I'm burning really clean, doesn't it? Oh, now it's black. Oh, now it's it's just like random puffs of black. Weird. But that means that means I'm burning really well, right? I'm I'm yeah, using all a, my wood. A clear correct. stack is is perfect combustion. Or, or right. too much air, depending on... Oh, goodness. Well, hey, yeah, I got right a here. lot of air, man. I'm just... It's just straight air coming out of this thing. Uh, uh, switches! Railroad's online! Did you derail? No. I just won't Shh. let me throw a switch. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds so, about right. It's fine. We're just going down the wrong lead. I didn't realize that these switches were back-to-back -back for the, uh, the oil fields. Versus yep. the uh, um, the ironworks, and I proceeded to just send it around the wrong bend here. I'm just uh, looking off the side, looking down at the railroad as I drive around. It's really cool, super nice, kind of chill. This engine's really loud. Like it's just <laughs> oh, she's walking down. They got stuff to say. Okay, hold on. No, 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 
to scan. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm frustrated. Uh-oh. 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 It's fine. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Uh. Uh, I need sand, and I need to stop going backwards. This, uh, this derailment doesn't count for Montezuma needing to go to the shop because okay. it was bad switch physics oh, that, so it's uh, fault. That, that threw it into the air. So it's MOW's fault. And by MOW, I mean QMA. Got you. No, I, 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 I follow. I uh, had the unfortunate thing of wheel slip, and you can't really feel it in the cab, but all of a sudden, you don't move anymore. Like, you don't move... <laughs> Like, the, the train just starts slowing down, you know? And it's like, oh, no. And so now I've got 100% with sand. But I don't know if I'm going to run out of sand or not. I can't tell how much sand I have left. It's been a while since we filled up the Climax with sand. Yeah, and, it, and it's kind of funny. Um, of all of the resources to treat preciously in the game, it's funny that it's sand because it feels like that's backwards. Like, the firewood and the water should be used like the sand is, and then the sand should last forever. Like these domes on these locomotives hold hundreds and hundreds of pounds of sand. And yeah, I mean, you're letting it out through a pretty small pipe. I mean, it lasts a long time. How often have you filled up the sand on your engines? When we were running Polar Express, which is the worst season for us using sand and everything, and we're running the most, it's like maybe once a week. So once every seven days of operating, we need to add some sand. Right. So really not much at all. And I mean, that the sand dome on our engines, like 491 sand dome probably holds 500 or 600 pounds of sand. Like, it's a lot. Actually, more than that, because I've, I've put at least 12 bags in it before. Which, and they're what 50 pound the bags. What was the tonnage so, math anyway. on this? What were you saying? Like It's 179,000 pounds, and the climax is good for 191,000. So you got 10,000. Okay, I'm, like, I'm barely spare. pulling this at 100% with Hi, sand. Guys. Go get Glenbrook and shove on the back. I could, but it's it seems like uh, too far away now. <laughs> this is a very scary experience when I'm pulling like you know, actual throttles and stuff. This is I'm a very sure scary real experience guys, going this fast around this reverse loop right now. That's fine. I feel like the real the real guys doing this back in the day, like when they actually slipped on a hill, that must have been terrifying. You're pulling a heavy freight load with a locomotive, and then all of a sudden you just you feel it slip and. You know, you pull your throttle and nothing happens, like... Dude, you get a wheel slip, you, you have a baked-in reaction as an engineer. You feel it. You feel it in the throttle before it actually happens, too. So you can usually catch it, and you shut off, and you come right back out, and then it's fine. It's a lot less scary than you'd think, because um, it's actually really easy to fix. You just push the throttle in a bit and then come back out on it. Sometimes you'll slam it all the way shut and then come right back out, but, I mean, it's... It's usually pretty quick, and it's only when you leave your hands off stuff for too long that it becomes like a volcanic bad slip, and then then those are problematic, but um, that's right. usually a bad engineer that uh, causes that sort of thing to happen, or somebody having a bad day at least. So I got this thing just chugging at 93% with no sand. It's it fine. seems to be working. See? So there's, there's your 10% extra. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm coming up to a corner, man. I'm going to give it 95. Oh, it slips. That's not well, good. Well, yeah, sand, dude. Oh, god dang it. Here we go for a ride again. Brutal. I really wish I really wish that would get fixed. Because gear trains, I should be able to put it 100% and have it just pull for days. That's the, that's the point. Yep most powerful locomotive in the game and you can't really use it that way yeah you just got to balance it all the time and it's really tough to, to ride that balance because now i'm just burning through sand which if i if i run out of sand like that's game over oh wait i didn't have my bell i need to pull the bell that's right give me that tractive effort yes speaking of yeah give me that bell traction ding ding there we go. Right, I'm unloaded at the ironworks so oh wow you're it's just now like, way uh, ahead it's, it's now out of raw iron so we'll have to bring that there next, but it's got 12 lumber left over, so. And we've got like 200 coal there still, so it's, uh, it's all fine. Yeah, I got optimistic and tried turning off the sand and it slipped again, so. <laughs> Why would you do I'm that? Right, I'm like right at tonnage. I can't, I can't keep the throttle low enough without sand to pull it, you know what I mean? Like it's, 
if I have the throttle high enough to pull it, it slips without sand. Gotcha. So I was like, I'm trying to get the sand, like the 95% throttle with without the sand, but it still slips. I think maybe like 93 is the limit, but then I don't think I can pull the load at 93. That is a bummer. Yeah, so I'm just burning sand this whole way up. All right, 94%. Can I turn off the sand? It slips. <laughs> Why are you experimenting when you're like trying to make it up the hill? Well, you know, cause like science, right? I see. We just bought this locomotive from uh, the company, and I love the sand pouring onto the top of the wheel. Oh, These switches! Sure we... Almost caused a problem again, it's fine. Alright, 93% no sand. Should be good. That's the that's the, the secret part. right there. I made it to the flat part of the first six and a half percent. We're climbing up the second six and a half percent now. My smoke is back. <laughs> the fact that it disappeared is very strange. It is, oh, it disappeared again. It's fine. I have no smoke. Oh, big puff there. Are you serious? You're slipping? Oh my god, this freaking train, man. This train. Brutal. Brutal. Not quite at the limit, but close enough to be annoying. It's, 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 yeah, it's just close enough where, like, it's almost better to have, because now I gotta waste all the sand. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep full sand on now. I don't have a choice. Well, that's what I would do. Yeah. Gotta get up the hill, man. Now like I just gotta hope that I not don't. Not like you're trying to save the sand for something else. Yeah, well, it's, now I just I just want to have to fill up again. But now I gotta hope that I don't run out of sand. That's the key. No, and just back down, and start over at the bottom of the hill. You know. I'm not. I'm not. We're not. You know what? If I run out of sand, I'm gonna cut this in half, and then bring them up in twos. That uh, that is an option. It's not a fun option, but it is an option. Makes you realize, like, railroading back in the day in the mountains must be just the biggest slog fest ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, before they made these gradual, like, two and a half, three percent lines or whatever that blast tunnels through the mountains and all this stuff, like, it just must have been a slog. Like, you know, three locomotives pulling one car at one mile an hour for three hours, you know? Like, it's just... It's definitely, definitely a unique vibe and the stories from that era of railroading like the amount of crazy stuff that happened and went on is kind of incredible you gotta be kidding me oh uh, uh, I guess what I just ran out of sand Boiler pressure? Uh, milk, I'll tell you that much! Fire? Water? Steam? Sand. Bummer. You'll make it. I believe in you. I'm picking up so much speed in reverse. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, I just dropped off my set of seven cars in the runaround and Gonna run around on the main, go put the Zuma back in the roundhouse, quote unquote. Wow, that's I, I'm so happy for you. <clears throat> how's uh, how's railroad in the mountains going? Flatland, great, man. Flatland railroad it's was great. Easy today. I'm glad I left my family for this to like go out on the railroad for four days, you know, and get stuck. Uh, it's just fine. You'll make it back home sometime. Ha halfway up the the mountain with. All right, you might as well go to the helper station and, you know. Help a grab, brother out. Grab Glenbrook and push but from I'm, the back. I'm, I'm not done putting Zoomy Boy away. Oh yeah, well once you once you get that done, I'm taking a run at this now with 92%. Um, 92% throttle doesn't seem to slip. I don't have any sand though, so we're just gonna leave it at 92%. Seems like we're moving. You got this. I hope this is enough just to just to power through. Maybe it's just 92% with some speed, you know? Yeah, it could be. Get a little momentum. Yeah. And now I'm not like at the slip risk. 
still have no smoke. We're burning clean. That's good. <laughs> I wonder what's causing that. It's weird. Nice. It's, it's perfect fireman uh, is uh, what it is. That's, I'm just a. I'm just a really good fireman. My pressure relief valve is blowing like crazy, so there is that. I mean, that's um, the sign of a bad fireman, but that's that's okay. Yeah, but I got clean smoke, so. Yeah, but you're wasting steam. Well, why are you, why you, are you working so hard? Well, I'm trying to get her up this hill, man. But yeah, but oh you're still God. making too much steam. Like you're you're putting she's more fuel gonna, in than you she's need. She's not gonna make this. Come on, chug, chug. What if I throw firewood over the side? Will that help? We need to lose, lose some weight. Some weight. <laughs> Firebox is at 94%. Come on, chug. Don't be, it's because I'm taking a corner right now and I'm only at 92% thrall. I'm just not going to touch it. Maybe it'll shallow out. Swan Climax, you can fun. do this. You're the most powerful engine in the game, right? Like, confidence. Confidence is key. Confidence. It's ah, doing it, man. Ah. It's doing it. Why is this turntable not aligned anymore? Well, because, uh, science. There was a oh, really oh, strong man. Uh, 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 Heist is breaking uh, things again. Uh, uh, that was a fun one. Did you derail? Yeah, the, the tender hit the turntable being slightly misaligned and, like, did a sick 360 no-scope. Uh, well, you flat. might as well put it into the freaking shed. Yep, guess uh, Montezuma's going to the shed. It's fine. Yeah, you, you, you bend it twice. Montezuma's going once... to the shed because of Kume. Um, I'm going to die on this hill, but it's fine. I, 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 like, I don't know, man. I think you bend it, and last episode, people said you, you bend you another you tender. I feel like you, you stole, watch. like, tenders. You don't. You you didn't even see. You don't even know what happened, okay? No, I didn't, but I made it up this hill with the climax. Oh, there you go. All right, it's in the shed. I mean, yeah, it's... Uh, Unbelievable. They're working on it. It's fine. The key is 92%. 92. 92% 90, and no sand, and it has uh, traction, but 93% and it loses it. I'll even be an outstanding gentleman and uh, line the switches for you. Oh, you're such a gentleman. Do you want to run around your cars and stab uh, them in? Is it beams at the far end and lumber close? Yes. Yeah, I got to run around them then and push. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we can fit all eight in there. I don't know. I don't know if we can do eight. Let's see. Pretty sure we can't. Well, you're lying to the runaround, so. But look, look at you! You've made it here. Yeah, I'm. I'm thrilled, bro. Thrilled. <laughs> you know how flat spotted my wheels are? You don't even want to know. They're uh, they're probably very flat. Yeah. Yeah, from trying to hold the train on the hill, just from it's yeah fine. when we were sliding down. It's all good. That's, that's how that works. All right, I'm gonna disconnect here then and run around them. Can't even give it 100% to get away. There we go. Poor stupid climax. Someday it shall be fixed. Perhaps. I like the climax though. It's a sweet train. It's a, it's a cool choo choo. They're cursed, but they're cool. You guys definitely need to get a gear train up at the museum. Uh, no. You don't want the, nope. too many moving parts? A lot more maintenance? Mm, yep. Yep, no thanks. Just way too much maintenance to deal with? Yep. I just need the switch throw. There we go. Alright, full reverse. I'm not gonna lie, running in first person has not been as easy as I thought it would be. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of annoying, honestly. The, yeah. UI, the UI is really comfort easy. Uh, the UI is cool and the visibility is just so much better. Now that's yeah, that's definitely the or the realistic thing about it. That's for sure. Do you want to be optimistic? We can be optimistic and try it. Well, we can do we can do the four beams first, no matter what. Well, we could, or the we four. Could, we could stab the, the whole thing in there and then unload what we can and then stick the the uh, okay, empties sure, off to the side, that, like see what, see what happens, kind of mentality. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get all the planks. I think we'll get all four beams, but find out. We will have to see. Uh, sir, I saw you running in the gauge there, sir. Sir, I'm going to call. It's fine. Am I clear? 
Yep, bring him ahead. Amazing. I can't see, like, anything. I'm looking at, like, the black interior of the cat. I guess I could lean out the window, but... All right, That's, uh, that is the real answer. I mean, it's the way... You spend a lot of your time with your head out the window on a steam engine. Yeah, two Seems cars. Seems like a fun job. One car. Terrifying. Half car. Ten foot. Dunk. Were you expecting me to not just dunk that? Is that... I mean, I mean you know, maybe proper train handling, perhaps. Five mile an hour is the speed limit, right? Uh, no, 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 I mean, that's a little spicy with this old wood junk, but, you know, it's fine. Also, also for the poor sap that has to be the one to hold up the link and put the pin in, I mean, that's kind of awful. Oh, that's but... right, you have to hold the link up. Into yeah. The posi oh, that's, yeah, uh, that would suck. You, you just crushed all my fingers. I don't have a hand anymore. It's fine. It's fine. I didn't like playing you were, guitar you were anyways. You blessed with two hands. That's why you have to... I didn't like playing guitar anyways. <laughs> I'm just going to throw my Johnson bar into forward while I'm going backwards. That's the way to do it. It's fine. Let me know when I'm clear of the switch. I didn't even oh, need to be almost, in your company. Look, you're here to there. unload anyway. No, that's true. Yeah. Almost there. Two cars. All right, that'll do. A head. Here we go. We. This is this is literally about as fast as we go. There's a. Uh... It's fine. Climax is a climax. They're slow. Is what it is. Okay, take it easy. And get down to walking speed if you could. That's pretty good. Unloading first car. Yeah, you can go faster than that. Come on. You don't have to stop. Just keep shoving slowly. I'm scared. I'm very scared of the dunk device at the very end of track it's here. It's fine. Just don't, don't have a lot of throttle on and you'll be okay. Okay. Are you unloading the others, or are we even... Oh, we haven't gotten to the lumber yet. Uh-oh, that's not good. I don't think we have space. We probably don't have space to do all of them, but we have space to do most of them. Got that one. Okay, almost to the bumper. What did you do? Why are you out of the cab? Go back you to your hole. The cab. Go back to I your got, hole. I'm what good. are you doing? I'm good. What I'm are helping. You, what, what, what is... Do you know Let's how fast you would be clocked over the head with a brake club for leaving the cab <laughs> as the engineer? Do you know what you just don't, did? Don't worry about it, You man. just don't broke worry. all of the railroad, train crew, social, we're everything. All right, so we're going to push the six over and then... Yeah, and then we'll just take the other two back. a lane. Yeah. yeah. What, are you, what, are you cool. running the ground now, too? Like, you're making the plan? Oh, you're coming down on the ground. and it's yep. notch eight, oh. and I can't get back in. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Real good engineer train man. Look at you. There we go. We're good. I Clear. don't think... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know. I made that mistake once, like... They were having trouble figuring out some moves and I figured out what we were gonna do in my head and I was the engineer. And uh, I did not know the, the name of the politics that is stay in the gosh darn seat, dude. Um, and uh, man, I got yelled at for leaving to try and help big time. Anyway, shove him ahead. I'll just kick him. Yeah, it's a, it's a big no-no. Get back in your cab! How many times am I gonna tell you this? I'm rabble, stuck rabble, on the rabble. side of the mountain. I'm stuck on the side of the mountain. I can't get back in the cab. Well, I'm just going to let this happen because uh, you did this to yourself. Okay, okay, we're good. I'm back in the cab. Back in the cab. All right, uh, back up. Uh, we no, lost our dust break. drop opportunity because you break, dinged on. Break, break, full reverser. There we go. It's fine. Okay. Those cars are just punted to the end of track now. All right, that's good. That's good. <laughs> They'll do something. All right. All right. A head. Don't worry, man. I'm, it's fine. I'm doing things. It's fine. It'll be fine. Don't even worry about it. All right, perfect. Listen, we're on a tight schedule here, okay? So tight um, schedule. He says. Yeah, sure. It's a tight schedule. 
So I'm right. just gonna let you unload these. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. What are, you, what are you? What are you? What are you talking about? Oh, we're just. I'm just gonna like just unload these. I'm gonna slow down there a smidge, there, hot rod. No, I'm. I'm really. Okay. Really got the need for speed. You know keep, what I'm saying? Keep it coming. Keep it coming. I think you're good. I think you're good. You'll get this one. <laughs> Eventually. Okay. Well, let me All do right. it there. All right. I'm stuck in the boiler of my of my train. You've now burned to death. That's exciting. Uh, yeah. Hold All on. Right. Hold take on a, a minute. Take it back. Are we good? Okay, perfect. All right, well, we'll just leave these here for next time. What? Do you want to ride, or are you going to gonna walk? What, what, what? Oh, wait, I went to the UI. My bad. I forgot. Are we, are, we just, are we just leaving the cars here? Yeah, we got to come back up for iron anyway, so we'll come get these, you know, and just... Okay. Cons head, slap them on the back. There you go. <laughs> slap them on the back of the car. Well, because we can bring the hoppers up the... Um, we can come up the other way, up the uh, switchback. Right, <laughs> and then come down the ten percent, and then come the down the ten percent, hook up the rest, and leave with all the iron. Bring it to the smelter. Uh, you know, that's think. that's a vibe. That is a Dude, vibe. It's all it's end of shift, okay? And I just didn't want to bring those cars. Con, back, Con so has officially thrown his keys at the ground and said, yeah, "We're done it's here." It's third shift's problem now. You know, yeah. <laughs> they'll deal with it. I turned on your dynamo. You've been running without your headlights this whole time, so that's going to be. Do you hear that merits. noise though? Do you hear like how dynamos are so annoying? Yes. Yeah. Just imagine when they're actually like six hundred times louder than that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm good. Thing. We're we're picking up we're picking up speed. Um, as don't much as I'd it. like to, you know, go see what the future past it. is like. I don't want to. Don't you bin know. it. Don't bin it. Fine. Oh, it's shaking aggressively. Don't bin it. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm just going to bring this back to the helper station and then, you know, push back with the Glenbrook. Or, you know, I'm just going to leave the Glenbrook at the helper station. Third shift's problem. <laughs> Con is officially done, everybody. We're uh, yeah, we're, we're changing shifts. Some other crew. We're, we we yeah. hit our hours of service. They're going to call a dog well, catch. Once the recording time hits an hour, that's when I'm like, you know what? It's uh, it's third shift's problem. That's yep. sort of where it, where yep. it becomes... <laughs> Thanks you know? for watching, everybody. Uh, if yeah. he bins it, uh, I'll t I'll tell you in the description. It's fine. No, we're not. I'm not gonna bin it, bro. I'm gonna think. I'm, look at this. Look at this. Look at this skill. Look at this brake skill. You're right. Watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to 100. percent I'm in zero brake. Zero brake. Watch this. We're not even gonna bin it. Look at this. Spicy. Look at. Spicy. No, we're fine. Spicy. Zero percent brake, bro. You gotta well, believe. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Yep. 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 There it is. On that bombshell, it's time to end. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> we have to bring this back to the red shop. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's going to sit there for... Uh, we, the good thing we left the Glenbrook in the helper station. We'll come get it next time. Yeah, Glenbrook's going to tow it back. <laughs> yep. Well done. Well done, uh, Con. Well done. And you give I, me you, crap you know, for you, binning. You said we. it was end of shift. I was trying to get home, you know. It was that's, 37 that's, cars. They were all invisible. Well, you know, it's just, it's just the way it is. How, how dare you? How dare you do oh, this? Well, we'll get it next time. The standing by will be standing by. And by standing, yeah, I mean lying on its side because Khan blew it up. It's fine. Better, better turn off the dynamo. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> just in case. It's fine. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next time. Later. Bye.